doing my audio's on in case you were wondering glad to see you this is uh coffee with the cowbell so cheers everybody i'm your host ricardo wilkins um let me check i'm always worried my audio isn't on I think I'm good good to see you again uh, if you're joining this is uh, part three of my little series on guest collaboration hopefully it's been it's been useful um, and uh, we're gonna keep the party going here in terms of collaboration in the last couple sessions we got on the same page and defined what a guest is uh, and then we started talking about some of the pros and cons of 
guest collaboration as it stands today until we all get the release of shared channels, which in my opinion will be a big game changer for guest collaboration. And today I'll show it's in preview. Uh, I have my uh, environment set to allow preview. So I'm going to show a little bit of that today. Um, before I do that though, um, let me go here. Um, so I did want to talk a little bit more about pros and cons of uh, the guest experience. Uh, and particularly, so if you come to this here tonight and don't take any, away anything else, you might, this might be the tip for you, which is, you know, today, as we talked about last time, you have multiple uh, tenants that you're a part of different organizations like here. And of course they're named the same, but this is, you know, two, two organizations that Ricardo is in and you have to switch between the two. Another challenge that I don't think we talked about last time of this concept is that when I am in my home tenant, there is potentially activity in the guest tenant that I don't want to miss. And depending on how um, busy that other tenant is in terms of activity, this could be a small problem or a big problem. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and switch. So I'm in uh, the my home tenant here. I'll switch over to the tenant in which I am a guest. OK, and uh, let's minimize that. And there we go. I've switched over to the guest tenant. Now. Um, so here's some act, there has been some activity. While I've been gone. And I want to make sure I don't miss these things. So what's important to remember is if you've used Teams, you know that, you know, you've got settings and you've got notifications to uh, do things like when do I get my missed activity emails, the emails that say someone, you know, some activity happened in Teams gives you a little digest of it, depending on how you set this. Well, that's a setting per tenant. I might decide in my home tenant to give me that once every hour, maybe daily. But one recommendation recommendation I may tend to make is that in your guest tenant, or I'll say in when I'm in guest tenants, I typically set this to as soon as possible. In other words, in the guest tenant, when anything happens concerning me that, you know, a, a channel mention, uh, certainly a personal mention, I want the email right away. So in fact, it's, it's hitting as soon as possible pretty means every pretty much means every chat post is um, is going to come to me, uh, you know, essentially, you know, almost immediately. Now, I, obviously, or maybe not obviously, this works well in a tenant that's not too chatty. I mean, if you're in a guest tenant and it's rocking and rolling all the time, that could be a problem. A lot of the guest tenants I am, I'm in are relatively quiet so this works for me but what it means is that I can sit comfortably in my home tenant knowing that I'll get an email if something's going on in the guest tenant and when it does then I go switch over and check it out or respond or whatever it may be if it was chattier I'd probably set that to something like every hour or something like that but that is the key for me to um, keeping up with that guest tenant if the, the guest tenant is important not important enough or you know uh, yeah if it's important enough you know maybe that's a tenant that you switch over to often anyway and then this isn't quite as as needed right if you're just if you're in and out of that tenant all the time anyway that's maybe not as big a deal 
But if it's a tenant that you only go into when someone needs you, then that becomes really important, right? Um, so you want to, uh, if you want to, you know, respond quickly to things, I would set that setting to uh, uh, immediate or as soon as possible. So that's a little tip for those of you that are like me that uh, either have customers or just for whatever reason uh, need to live in other tenants, especially if it's more than one. Uh, don't forget about that setting and let your email inbox be your guide to help you decide whether you need to jump over to that tenant. So to me, that's a good tip. To me, that's worth the price of admission tonight. Um, and um, so hopefully that's helpful. OK, um, let me just check in the uh, OK comments. All right. Uh, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. All right, cool. Go back to this. All right, a little mix up there. Okay, so hopefully that, that was helpful. So again, that speaks to the challenges, though, of guest collaboration. Is that tenant switching and keeping up? What's going on and switching back and forth? Okay, I, I've seen. Uh, if you're in a case where it's really one main guest tenant that you're in that you need to keep track of, I've seen people use another trick of, and it's the trick I used to, your home tenant is in the desktop app of Teams and your guest tenant is in the browser version of Teams. Um, and those two you can keep open. Depending on your conditional access settings and so forth, that's probably that might be as much as you can do. Um, so that's another tip as well. If you start being in half a dozen teams, you know, that trick's not going to work. OK, the reason I'm kind of spending time on the pros and cons here, it's almost like the appetizers that help help us see the value of this shared channel concept that I'm clearly so excited about. OK, um, and so. That being said, um, let's go ahead and jump over to that. And, and what, what you're looking at here, I, I got two uh, um, users up. So let me go back to my home tenant. So this is Ricardo on that we're looking at here. And then this is Bob over here. And, I'm, and you know, I got them both up and ready to go so that we can go back and forth and kind of see uh, the experience of Ricardo and Bob as they collaborate together with these shared channels. Okay. Um, so again, I am, uh, I don't think you can see it here, but you know, I've, I've enabled uh, preview in order to get this. So if you don't see this in your tenant, you know, it, it's not surprising. It's still in preview. Um, I don't know what the actual, the date is for it to be general, general availability, but share channels if i come over here to my teams you can see that i've got a channel here called share with bob with this new looking uh symbol so that is a share channel that's how i know it's a share channel okay and uh this one happens to be in this team called retail this is ricardo's tenant if i come over well if I uh, click it, you know, it looks like a regular channel, still got the symbol up there. And if I come look at the members, so I see it's a shared channel here and I can see the members. So um, the members are uh, um, two members, actually. So I, I'm the owner and I've got two members. One is Bob, who is in my org. And the other is Ricardo in a different org. OK. So let me pause here to say um, another reason why I'm excited about the share channels. It, 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 the, the immediate uh, benefit seems like collaborating with my external partners and folks outside of my org bringing them in in a more elegant way. And that's absolutely true. What you'll also find is, in my opinion, this is a game changer for internal 
collaboration with your colleagues within your org. And that's represented here. I've got a shared channel both with a person in my org as well as a person outside of my org. See so two organizations here. Okay. And so we'll kind of dive into that. Um, so I, I don't have um, Ricardo the uh, in the other org up, but for the purpose of you know today, well this is, this should suffice. If I go over to Bob, we'll see that Bob's looks just like Ricardo's in terms of that channel with the symbol, um, and for the most part, you know things look the same. Uh, just like private channels, if you are familiar with those. You know, there's some caveats uh, to it. I, I, I tried to, I uh, should have brought up the um, website to kind of maybe go through those caveats, but you know, we got another session we can talk through that. But keep that in mind. This is not gonna be a full blown, uh, you know, regular channel. One classic example, for instance, you see I hit add a tab. I'm not getting all my tons and tons of tabs. I'm not getting planner. Um, that's usually a big, uh, uh, it's usually easy to notice so typical things like that if you were doing private channels you're used to that caveat or that concept okay so that being said once everybody's in the big the big thing here is Bob well let's, let's say Ricardo who's in a whole nother org and I really should have brought brought that up but is interacting with this um, in fact you know Bob here it's going to look the same uh, to Ricardo it's a channel in the team um, what's different is uh, let me see if I can let me try to bring that up real quick this might work out just fine give me one sec do, 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 do. let's do this just uh, cleaning up some stuff here. Okay. Nope, I can't really bring that up in a great way. All right. Well, um, yeah. So, okay. So the the share channel is actually uh, originates in this delete me team. Okay. So if I come over here. Uh, da, da, da. This hidden team here is where this originates. Okay, um, and if you're paying attention right now, you might ask the question. Let me unhide it. Uh, show it. You might ask the question, Ricardo. I see that shared channel in two different teams. Is that a copy? Is that uh, a separate channel that you for whatever crazy reason named the same it is the same this is uh so you could see let me change the zoom on this a bit uh, da -da. hello uh, I was gonna, I'm trying to get my zoom going here Every, nobody wants to behave and my zoom is not agreeing with me just trying to just get that but you can see this is uh you know the test and test one two three same thing going on in this channel if i click over right so it, it i wouldn't necessarily call it a copy but it is the same channel it's showing in two places and that's because there's different ways to share this and let's talk through that first off uh let's come over here because actually uh and this is, looks a little better. Bob's got the same thing, right? Because, because Bob happens to be in this retail team. So you can see he's got the same thing going on in each. Now, how do you make a share channel, add a channel, and now instead of the two, uh, uh, sorry, I'm in the wrong. Oh boy, I'm clicking around too much. Add a channel. Wait, 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 what am I doing here? So something nice, this is real nice. Something happened with my tenant here. And you know what it is? I bet, let me do this. 
I think I did this in a previous session. This is the uh, approach when something's acting glitchy in Teams. I do my check for updates. I give it a sec. I usually sign out, sign back in. Because I am expecting to see a third option when I do add a channel, um, which should be the share channel. And I'm not seeing it. I'm going to do that over here too. One would argue, one would say, Ricardo, why didn't you check this before you started? <laughs> I can't think of everything. So let me get us a second here. I usually give, I usually pause for a second, give that check for updates a chance to do things. I often see some of this glitchiness after switching tenants, which I've done twice already here. So this is not totally surprising. So let me give it a second. Not seeing anything. I'm going to go ahead and uh, really, am I? Is it not responding? That is classic. All right, let me give this one. Uh, let me sign out of here. Sign out. You are not responding, are you? All right, we're gonna get this. We're gonna make this happen in one sec. I'll log back in here. some things over in another window here and we'll check this guy and see if he has made any changes uh, da -da -da. so it didn't fix that okay my other one is responding now Please. no this is a lot of clicking around okay see so here we go. You see that we've updated the app. Please refresh now. That's what I was expecting. We're going to do that. It's going to sign me out, do its thing. We'll see if that gave me the fix I'm looking for. So I'm back in after this refresh that they say I need it. See if, what that did for me. Oops, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. that's what I wanted. I wanted to come here. Oh, the other thing, I'm, yeah, the other thing is that may not be, let's try this here. Nope, okay. Uh, and let me try one more thing. Uh, wow, this is really, when you're trying to demo, then everything goes crazy because I also want to be the owner of the team and this is just really not working on that side try one more thing here all right so something unexpected is happening that has taken away my uh, my shared channels feature and in fact I had I was suspicious because when you're in uh, when you're in uh, preview, you should see like a little P up here and I'm not seeing that anymore. So something's up with that. It's all good. I, I can, we're going to roll with this. Um, so all that's keeping me from doing is actually showing you what you could probably imagine, which is ad channel will have a third option. And then as you would expect, and as part of the wizard, it'll ask you how you want to, who you want to add to that channel. That's fine. We'll, sh we'll show that next time. Once the, the, uh, uh, channel exists and you want to add others as you can see here share the channel it has a few options okay um, share it with people that's obvious give me individuals that I can share it with uh, what may not be as obvious is that um, it could be people in your org or out of your org as you see here type the name of someone in your org you want to add you can also add people outside your org by typing their email addresses in now I will say 
when you try this in preview, it does, you, you need to be a tenant or get the tenant to help because there are some back end settings you need to configure for all of this to work. Um, so keep that in mind. But that's sharing with individuals. You can also see that I can share it with a team or with the team that I own. Okay. And I guess I think it's just going to take a couple sessions to really dive into all of these. Um, but that share with the team, um, or in, in this case, probably share with the team you own, is what is allowing me to, to have this concept of seeing it in two places. Because I've cre I, in this case, I created it in the delete me um, team, but then I shared it with another team that I own, which is retail. Okay, now why would I do that? Could be a lot of reasons. One good reason that I have been using lately is that this is the team where, uh, you know, that kind of owns this shared channel. I will share this space with others. People like Ricardo in the any org that we just saw, they're going to get their view. First off, everybody's done with the tent the tenant switching okay that's the first you know big benefit ricardo over in any org is going to see this as the, a, a new team in along with the rest of his teams called delete me one with just one channel and it called share it with bob and so in that he can interact with everyone and from his perspective other than that symbol it looks like it's a team in his org and even the people in the team look like they're in their org it's it's not uh, totally you know obvious, but I mean the fact that I'm seeing the profile pictures of this external guest kind of speaks to the elegant integration going on here. But uh, so I've got this shared channel, and then I've also shared it with a, a team. What this is going to do is. Um, Let's say I'm Bob, right? And Bob, as we see here, is in both the delete me and the retail. Now, if retail, though, is the team that Bob really spends most of his time in, how nice is it that he now has a shared channel, which really is owned by a whole other team, but that shows in his main team as just another channel and that's one less team he's got to go interact with. So in, in Bob's world, for instance, he could hide, delete me and really just work with the retail team that he's all that he tends to stay in all day and, and still interact fully with that channel, you know, along with the other channels. And, and that to me is, is the benefit. Get full collaboration with a whole other team. That, that also includes people outside of my org potentially, but to me, it uh, it stays in the channel within a team that I, I already have. So the big the big uh, value here is that concept of where without this, I might have to invite my collaborator to a, a whole new team just because of the fact that the membership is different. Maybe there's guest collaborators. We don't want them in some other team that we own. But now I don't have to have, let you have a whole new team added to your list, already growing list of teams, right? You didn't get a new team. You just got one new channel in a team that you already own, if that makes sense. So if you've got a lot of teams and, and you know have gotten a lot of invitations from folks who you know want you to collaborate on something, and really the only way to do it was a new team, this should be a big deal. Okay, um, so what that does mean is, you know, to Bob, there there is a little bit of duplication here, but if, you know, if, if Bob understands, you know, what these are, then it shouldn't, shouldn't be that bad. It can get a little confusing though, especially if you're trying to manage the team, you gotta manage it in the, or especially if you're trying to manage the shared channel, you need to manage it in the team that owns it. But if you're just using it, it, it shouldn't be that bad and Someone like Ricardo here in the NE org um, is not a part of retail, has no concept of this duplication. To to that Ricardo, this is just one new channel and a new team that he got added to. Okay, so that duplication is not a, ne a, a necessary or always. That's not always going to be the case. This is just the case in in um, in this example. So 
in this r little short little demo here that the main thing I want to show here is the value of using this for internal collaboration. Um, in, in, in my day to day, you know, I'm using this where, um, let's say, I, let's say retail has got, you know, 100 people in it. But I really need some collaboration with two other folks from another team, as well as maybe maybe only 20 of the 100 people in this team. And so now these 22 people can work in this shared channel for those 20 people. I didn't no new team needed just a new channel for those two external people. Um, they just get a nice, uh, you know, they get one, I guess, one new team with it with the channel in it um, and all as well. So. Uh, Big, big benefit for internal collaboration is um, a lot less scenarios of adding someone to a whole new team. Big benefit for external collaborators is I'm done with my with the days of uh, switching tenants. I now have a very integrated, elegant look. Beyond all of that, the same thing we just talked about over those other two sessions pr pretty much applies in terms of I as a guest can do all my chatting. I can work with the files work within the limitations of the um, you know of this new type of channel um, and, and all as well okay uh, so hopefully that makes sense um, I was gonna say something else about that and uh, now I forgot but yeah no no new tenants now oh so one way why this might well one potential challenge as this gets released might be as I mentioned earlier the tenant admins got to do some things on the back end in terms of opening up external collaboration and depending on your org that may or may not be a change your org is comfortable with uh, so you'll have to, you know, work through that. I mean, it does. Uh, from my perspective, it it opens doors in a very, uh, you know, safe way. It, it leverages the security of Azure AD. It still, though, may be not. It may be beyond the risk tolerance level of your org. Um, so if if you run into that, I guess my advice, you know, don't be surprised. Right? It, it's not. I don't know. It depends on your org, whether they see this as the same as guest collaboration as it exists today um, or if they see these extra back end steps as being a little too much. So you may you may run into that. All right. So I had a bunch of glitches <laughs> that I, uh, with this, but I, I feel like I still pulled it out. Of, you know, I still uh, made it happen. All right. So this is just a glimpse of the shared channel concept. We certainly didn't dive very deep into it. That's the hundred level view. Um, I think I just feel like what you may have gotten out of this demo that some other demos that you may see on, on YouTube or whatnot these days as people are talking about this, maybe that internal collaboration scenario because the external external collaboration and, and no more tenant switching is the is the kind of obvious piece, but the internal piece is not so obvious. So um, hopefully we can continue to talk about this more in the future, and uh, you know go through some additional scenarios there. But uh, again, I am just uh, I really like the feature so far. My you know real life usage of it has has been great and I uh, can't wait for it to get to general availability. Um, and again, when it, when it goes GA, both orgs who want to collaborate with each other need to do those back end changes. So again, another reason why, even if your org is comfortable, the people you want to collaborate with in this way might not be comfortable and then it kind of stuck again too. But those are conversations to have once, uh, once the feature comes out. All right. So I hope that was helpful and I uh, hope you en enjoyed your coffee. This has been Coffee with the Cowbell. Mm -hmm.